Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Martin. I'm the moderator of the GBB AOR Community of Practice, as many of you already know. I'd like to welcome you today to our um, exciting event we're doing in collaboration with the whole of Syria, GBB AOR, to uh, celebrate the uh, Day of the Girl Child, um, the International Day. So what we're doing this week is we are going to focus all week long on learning how we can better improve our programming around adolescent girls and gender-based violence, because this is such an important population for us all and a very vulnerable group. Um, uh, we were extremely excited when uh, Fulvia contacted us from the, the whole of Syria GBV AOR to talk about um, maybe doing some work together to look at um, sharing all the lessons that they've learned over the past four years where they've been putting together their adolescent girl strategy. So this week we're going to um, focus through the lens of looking at the whole of Syria adolescent girl strategy on several really key important steps. Um, this is a community of practice event, so you have to be a member of the GBV AOR community of practice in order to participate in a lot of the different events. The webinars are open to the, um, to the wider world, but we also have a couple of other activities. Um, one, on social media, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and we've got some really great messages, the words of the girls themselves from the whole of Syria to, uh, to talk, and you can amplify their voices around the world. Um, on the community of practice, each day we're going to focus on a different part of the strategy and the lessons learned and hear from other community members about what they're doing in Asia, in Latin America, in the Middle East, in Europe, uh, in Africa, and all of the different places where we're working to implement GBV programs. Um, each day has a different theme, as I mentioned, and along with those themes is a uh, drop box of resources that are being shared, both the resources from the community, um, from the whole of Syria um, strategy, but also other colleagues who are working on um, particular topics with adolescent girls, they're sharing their materials as well. And we encourage you uh, to share your materials with us. We'll put them in the Dropbox. You know, everything that um, we produce out in the GBV world was originally someone's idea that they jotted down either in an email or in a message to be able to uh, start getting people around thinking about it and developing things. So that's what we're trying to do here is help you get ideas of how you can contextualize things to where you're working, to share your good ideas and how together as a, a group, we can all improve our, our response and works for that. Um, the next thing that we have on top of the targeted messages and uh, each day and the Dropbox of resources. So we also pulled together a directory of um, the people on the community of practice who've been working with adolescent girls and GBV. This is just the, the people that I was aware of at the beginning. So we encourage you, if you're in the community of practice and you've been doing work on this, just to pop your name in the chat, respond to it, and let us know also that you're out there so that we can also uh, hear from you. We also have pulled together a playlist of YouTube videos from different webinars that we've pulled uh, that we've put on and different resources around adolescent girls to help you. And we um, have an online chat, which is the first time we've done this on the community of practice where you can interact with the whole of Syria GBV coordinators and ask them in a more informal way about their work. So we really encourage you to join us this week to take some time to share what you're doing, because it's not just about us presenting things to you, but you also sharing in the community what you've done so we can learn from you. Um, and then for those of you who might be new, if you could advance the slide, please. Some of you who might be new to our uh, to the GBV AOR, um, what we are, of course, is a global working group, and we have a number of different activities. So we have, of course, the GBV AOR website, the community of practice of which I moderate. We have a help desk where you can you can get one to one support. We've got um, our different social media accounts, uh, podcasts, and uh, uh, videos as well. So we encourage you to check us out. The easiest way to find out where everything is is to go to our website, um, gbvaor.net. And we will uh, record this uh, webinar and send the PowerPoints around for all of you on the community of practice. So uh, please join us if you haven't already. So without further ado, uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, I want to uh, just turn it over. Um, our speaker today is Fulvia Boniardi from the, the Regional Whole of Syria GBV Coordinator. We're hoping Jennifer Miguel, who's the head of the Regional Hub, will be able to join us as well. Um, and Fulvia is going to walk us through and lead us through what, uh, how they came about the strategy, how they implement it, and what they've learned from it. So at the end, um, we'll take your questions. So please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, again, we have interpretation available. Um, you just need to go down to the bottom and you can go into English, French, or Arabic. And um, I hope uh, you're able to enjoy this. And if you have any questions that you won't feel shy, and I'm turning it over to you now, Fulvia. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And welcome, everyone. And thanks a lot for, uh, for this opportunity to showcase what we have been doing to focus uh, on, uh, on adolescent girls and their needs in humanitarian settings uh, across the whole of Syria, but also beyond that in, in the region, in the Arab states region. Um, I think that what I want to mention at the beginning is that this uh, idea, uh, as, you also, as you also said, is really for this week to be uh, a, an interactive week for everyone to learn, to share, um, based on, on the experience, based on what worked and what did not work. And, and therefore, I hope that it is not only um, for, for me and you, Sarah, and a few others to, to share ideas and experiences, but it's really for, for everyone else. And I also notice now going through all the list of participants that there are a lot of people that, uh, in a way or in another, contributed uh, to this uh, um, to this process uh, to one piece or the other. So really, at the end, the, the floor is open also uh, for anyone that have participated or is still involved uh, uh, to to come in and and share what has been your experience. Um, just to really give also a bit of clarity on what the whole of Syria is, it's just a structure that has been put in place to ensure coordination across different interventions within Syria. So we currently have three hubs, what we call three hubs, one uh, with three different GBV coordination mechanisms. Uh, one is based in Damascus and overlooks the coordination in government controlled areas. One is based uh, in Gaziantep, Turkey, and works uh, Turkey cross-border into northwest uh, areas of Syria. And the third one is based in northeast uh, Syria. Um, and, uh, and me, I'm based in Amman, and I overlook a bit uh, strategically uh, all the, the GBV coordination across the three hubs. So that's what it means when we talk about the whole of Syria approach. Um, so without further ado, let's, let, let's get into this. Uh, so what has been the life cycle of, of this uh, adolescent girl strategy? Um, next slide, if possible, please. So this is kind of, uh, as a first slide, I wanted to show kind of the whole uh, process. So basically we start with uh, assessing the needs and we do this uh, uh, through an annual assessment in the framework of the humanitarian needs of the review that then is, is, um, is, comes together into a publication that is called the Voices from Syria. And as you see, as you see here, we, we now um, have been working on this for a few years and this has become a, a good practice and I'll touch base upon that. Based on the needs, uh, that we have identified that there were specific to adolescent girls. We thought of um, strategizing, so developing these adolescent girl strategies to help address those specific needs that were identified back in 2017. So we came up with adolescent girl strategy, which is uh, the one that you see on the um, uh, top right corner. And then, uh, to implement the strategy, uh, we have developed uh, some targeted interventions uh, that address the immediate needs and the long-term resilience of adolescent girls. And we'll, I'll touch upon a few uh, today, and then on Thursday, as we have the other webinar, we will look uh, much more into, into this. 
So some of the examples are we have developed training material on how to make women and girls safe spaces more adolescent friendly. And then there is uh, this uh, very interesting uh, curriculum that was developed uh, by UNFPA Care and uh, Syria Relief and Development, uh, that is the Adolescent Mothers Against All Odds. And I think that uh, as, as with uh, all the program cycle, we try to also assess uh, the impact uh, uh, of these programs and adjust accordingly. So a good practice again on, on these, on more of the monitoring and evaluation side has been um, what UNFPA have been doing in the region, which is an annual regional impact assessment um, to, to understand what, uh, what has been the impact of the program with a specific focus also on the different uh, groups that, uh, that UNFPA serves, uh, including adolescent girls. And then this helps a lot to tailor the response, but also to understand what are the, the gaps in terms of, uh, of knowledge and, uh, and technical support and, 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 and support uh, um, UNFPA across the countries uh, uh, in improving this. And then also the uh, AMAL, uh, has been has gone through uh, some kind of learning review, and uh, and the adolescent girl strategy itself uh, ha has gone through a review to understand what what worked and what is what are still the gaps. So let me now go into a bit more depth uh, for each of these steps. Uh, uh, next slide, please. So as I was saying. What we have been doing is in the framework of the HNO, we conduct this assessment that goes beyond the multi-sectoral needs assessment that is mostly quantitative and it's conducted normally by OCHA to inform then the humanitarian response plan, the HIP. And we have based these assessments mostly on qualitative data. Um, and, and, what, and this report that comes out is really a kind of the, uh, the, the, the most up-to-date picture of the GBV situation in the country at whole of Syria level. So when, when throughout the years, so what, we have, what we have seen, and especially back then when we decided to, to do the adolescent girls strategy, was that adolescent girls were completely invisible and forgotten by the humanitarian response. And well, some of the things, uh, um, are, are still relevant, that there are still challenges that adolescent girls face, but are also those that we have tried uh, to address through the strategy and its implementation. So there were um, a lack of mobility uh, and, and therefore challenges to uh, move outside of the home, including to access services. Uh, there was a high risk of sexual violence and child marriage. Um, and, and divorced and widowed adolescent girls uh, were, were and are particularly at risk uh, of stigmatization and many forms of GBV. And what is interesting about these reports is that we try to build them based on the voices of women and girls that are collected through focus group discussion. So you find uh, an, uh, that the report is built on quotes. Uh, so similar um, to this one, I was forced by my father and brothers to marry when I was 14 to a man a decade older than I was. It was a toxic and violent relationship that, I, uh, that lasted uh, less than two years, by which time I had given birth to my first child. So we also had uh, some very interesting findings that related to sexual and reproductive health. Next slide, please. Um, which were basically that adolescent girls uh, uh, were lacking and were craving for information about uh, the physical and psychological changes, uh, about puberty, uh, menstrual hygiene, etc. Uh, that uh, unmarried girls uh, had difficulties accessing SRH services and clinics linked to that mobility challenges that I mentioned before, and also that adolescent girls uh, 
did not exercise full control over decision making regarding their bodies. And also that the medical staff uh, were sometimes reiterating some stigmatizing social norms uh, uh, that were um, uh, that, 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 that were limiting adolescent and girls' possibility to access SRH and also uh, to, uh, to make their choices related to their bodies. Um, I think that there is an interesting data down here that uh, if you can think of that on average, uh, adolescent girls comprise 20% of antenatal care visits uh, and deliveries in some of uh, UNFPA supported uh, reproductive health facilities in Syria. So you can understand the, also the, um, the, 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 what, what scope we are, we are talking about. Uh, next, please. So before I go into the strategy itself, uh, I wanted to mention in relation to voices from Syria, because this was identified uh, and evaluated uh, as a, a best practice that should be replicated uh, globally. What we have done is uh, we've come up with these beyond numbers that, uh, that is a knowledge product, a publication that outlines uh, how GBV coordinators or responders in any humanitarian response can safely gather GBV data and uh, in, uh, to better inform the, the humanitarian response. Um, and we called it beyond numbers because that's what uh, everyone asks us about. What, but what about the numbers? And we say, no, we, we don't necessarily need the numbers, but we have other ways to collect uh, the data and to conduct an assessment uh, that can actually inform very well the humanitarian response plan, even if we do not have the numbers. So if you're looking at uh, replicating a similar modality of assessment and looking into getting uh, GBV data, mostly qualitative data in a humanitarian response, uh, have a look at beyond numbers uh, uh, that will uh, explain what has been our process that you can hopefully uh, replicate. I see also that uh, on this call, there is also Julia and other colleagues, and we now have a Voices from Sudan uh, that is based on, on Beyond Numbers and the experience of Voices from Syria. And we will soon have also Voices from Somalia. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's being used and replicated. Uh, next, please. The way Beyond Numbers is organized is really uh, goes uh, through the different steps uh, of our approach. Uh, so how the data collection uh, was organized, uh, what qualitative and quantitative data we used, uh, how what, what some reflections about sampling, uh, how to analyze the data and report them, uh, the types of reports to produce, how to disseminate them, a few uh, hints about budget and timelines uh, and, and about COVID-19 um, adaptation as well. And so each chapter uh, will have the points to consider and what has worked in our experience. And I think that uh, I will not go into details, but over to tomorrow we will have a dedicated day about needs assessment so we can share more about uh, um, the links uh, to these publications as well. Next, please. So once we had these understood what were the needs, then we decided that we want to strategically think of how to address the needs. So we, we had, um, we, we, as the Holocidia GBV, um, we, AUR, we, we hired the two consultants that are here with us, actually, both of them. I see also uh, Sarah, of course, Sarah Martin was one of them. And I see Christine, Christine Anderson is also in the call. I saw her name before. So they helped us uh, really to engage GBB and SRH coordinators uh, um, across the whole of Syria and they've done a literature review. And then we, we, we had a, a series of uh, consultations uh, with humanitarian actors uh, uh, and, and also consultation with adolescent girls. What is interesting about this strategy is also that it looks at uh, 
an integrated GBV and SRH approach. So that's why since the beginning, the development of the strategy engaged also SRH staff, but we also looked into the integration with other sectors. As we know, adolescent girls are often at a crossing point of, of different sectors. So we did engage with education, with child protection, uh, et cetera. Uh, next, please. Uh, so the strategy is the, the main the overall objective is to empower Syrian adolescent girls uh, uh, through the provision of humanitarian assistance uh, to allow them to achieve equal rights and control over their lives, uh, to make the choices that they want and to lead meaningful and happy lives. And we had four main objectives. Uh, one is generate knowledge. One is promote uh, and improve um, the, the, the girl friendliness of our GBV and SRH services. One is improving the access to these services for adolescent girls. And one is, as I was mentioning before, engaging with the other actors across the sectors um, uh, to, to ensure that uh, adolescent girls overall and their needs in particular, uh, as well as, as their strength and resources uh, are uh, taken into consideration and as part of the response. Um, next, please. So I wanted to give a few examples uh, of what this, some, some of the strategy in practice. So some of the programs uh, um, and ideas that have come out of the implementation of this strategy. And I think we will have also time, more time on, on Thursday to look at these, uh, but, uh, and I also don't want to be the only one to speak about these. So I'll have other colleagues that I have directly implemented to speak about these. But one of the good practice that, uh, that have come out is uh, the Adolescent Mothers Against All Odds curriculum that has been developed um, by UNFK, UNFPA Care and Syria Relief and Development. Um, and has been implemented uh, from the Turkey cross-border operation into Northwest uh, part of Syria. And uh, it's, uh, it's, again, it's a curriculum that, uh, sorry, one, one of the main points of the main parts of this curriculum is the establishment, establishment of young mothers clubs. So <clears throat> dedicated the session uh, for, a length of two months to engage with uh, pregnant adolescents, uh, uh, young adolescent mothers or um, adolescent and young married uh, uh, girls. And, and the, the, the objective is really to um, preventing early pregnancies and poor reproductive outcomes, but also really supporting and empowering adolescent girls uh, uh, adolescent mothers uh, with the solid life skills uh, um, uh, to, to better uh, face uh, the, the new reality of being a married uh, uh, adolescent or a young mother and having to deal with uh, a lot of pressure and situations uh, that uh, an adolescent girl should not be faced with. Uh, it targets uh, um, married or engaged adolescents from 10 to 19. Uh, it's uh, held in safe spaces or have facilities. And as I was saying, it is a package of both SRH and GBV um, interventions. And then another one that was really interesting was the robotics product program with adolescent girls that is run by ISAN for Relief and Development. It's another CDN NGO. And ASAN is basically providing life skills sessions using robotics. Uh, and when we talk about robotics, we mean an educational robot that is made up by Lego and that has a, a programmable brain, three motors and five sensors and tablets. And I will very much like for ASAN if they're here or on Thursday to, um, to kind of give us a bit more updates about this, but it's basically um, creating a group of adolescent girls and teaching them how to build the robot 
and then teaching them how to program the robot uh, to make the robot do things. And, and beyond, uh, of course, uh, the, the technical expertise that they gain, uh, it's, it's showed to be very empowering and, and creating bonds uh, um, among the so social linkages also among the adolescent girls. Um, and then, of course, uh, there were other curriculum that, that are more known also internationally. Uh, for example, IRC Girl Shine that has been implemented uh, by IRC itself, but even beyond uh, uh, IRC by many other PDD actors in their zero response. Next, please. Again, in, uh, if we talk about the strategy in practice, one of the points, as, as I've mentioned before, was to generate knowledge and data. And, and we interpreted this also really to amplifying the voices of adolescent girls. And, and we've done this through uh, stories, through collecting uh, their stories, the stories that they wanted to tell us about their lives, about their future, about their dreams, their hopes, and their realities. And, um, and the one that you see here on the right is the cover page for, that, for In Her Words, which is the latest publication that is published today. And it features the narratives told, told directly by the voices of adolescent girls in humanitarian setting throughout the Arab region. And it is also uh, featuring some of their artwork that express uh, um, an interpretation of, of what were uh, the topics related to, to their uh, life, their challenges, their hopes and dreams. Uh, and I think that, uh, um, so we have, we have looked at this not just as a, a publication from a comms perspective, but really from an empowering point of view. So we engage the adolescent girls in an annual um, initiative uh, in different country offices and, co and, and coordination groups uh, with the support of all the GBV actors in the field uh, to support adolescent girls uh, in telling us these stories uh, through coaching and, and storytelling or through arts. And, and what we found out is that at the end, these publications are both, yes, for amplifying the voices and making their stories visible to uh, a larger audience, uh, more at global level, but also bringing these stories back to them, to the adolescent girls, uh, through activities to disseminate uh, these publications uh, and making them understand that their life experiences is probably similar to the ones that others have, have, have lived. Uh, the, the previous one before this one, uh, I think we will touch uh, upon them also on Thursday, so I won't go into details. Uh, but another interesting point was also to review our data gathering from a coordination perspective. Um, so for example, including the adolescent girls age breakdown in the four Ws to make sure that we can have a better analysis of the services that we provide uh, and in general, encouraging all GBB actors uh, uh, through also monitoring and evaluation to look uh, and collect the section age disaggregated data that have that take into consideration the 10 to 19 age bracket. And last, I think, next uh, next slide, please. Uh, we, as I said, we assessed uh, the impact uh, and evaluated. Uh, the impact uh, both, both from a programmatic perspective and from the strategy perspective. So as I mentioned, uh, UNFPA conducts uh, this annual regional impact assessment of its programs. And this is also becoming something that we're trying to replicate uh, in other regions. Uh, and, um, and, and, and this impact assessment is also based on client feedbacks, uh, but also focus group discussion and key informant interviews, including with adolescent girls, uh, uh, people with disabilities, uh, older women, et cetera. So we have a focused understanding of what has been an impact uh, for 
kind of each uh, um, uh, vulnerable group, uh, or at least the sum of the vulnerable groups. And, and then we are also trying to replicate some of the good practices um, across the region. So right now, the Adolescent Mothers Against All Odds it be, is being replicated in, uh, in Jordan and, and Lebanon. And what we've found out uh, um, also as uh, kind of the impact of the strategy is that it had the spillovers uh, um, throughout uh, the region, especially the regional Syria response uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, Syria itself, right? So the focus on adolescent girls uh, um, was, uh, was, was also um, taken on by other countries such as Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, uh, um, and, and others in the region. And we have also reviewed the strategy itself and we are, we are planning to have a follow on adolescent girls strategy based on the findings uh, of the review. And these were uh, the main recommendations uh, um, uh, on, 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 the, on the strategy itself, but uh, uh, one of them in fact was uh, expanding the geographical man mandate of the strategy to cover more of the region. Um, uh, I think that others were related uh, to again, scaling up uh, uh, the programs that are specifically targeted to adolescent girls. Uh, again, the SRH and GBV integration to be strengthened even more um, and continue to, to carry out uh, activities that amplify the voices of girls uh, um, um, at, uh, at programmatic and also policy level. And, and also um, the gender transformative uh, and economic empowering, empowering activities for young, um, for, for young girls, uh, sorry, for young women and adolescent girls. Um, and, and I think that uh, uh, overall also there were uh, some findings uh, uh, related to what, what had worked well. And I think that the, the, the general awareness um, uh, of adolescent girls' needs and opportunities was uh, the most tangible achievement, um, but also uh, the importance of empowering, empowerment programs uh, and the, the greater work uh, and coordination of GBV and SRH uh, in certain specific geographic locations uh, um, and, uh, and overall also a more willingness to accept the idea of bodily auto autonomy of, of married girls. So kind of changing the, those stereotyped ideas among service providers as well. So um, I think that, uh, that that's it. I wanted to uh, close also with the, the voices of adolescent girls in the next slide. There is a quote uh, from an adolescent girl living uh, in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. I want to be a journalist because my and many other stories need to be heard. I want to document everything, the violence against women and children and the courage of the people who continued to work hard for the future of the Syrian people, like the health workers and volunteers and the case managers who continually help girls like me find hope amid the chaos. So thank you very much for this uh, space and for the attention. And I'll be very pleased to, uh, to get any questions, but also to leave the floor for anyone who would want to jump in for, um, to complement anything that I said. Thank you so much, Fulvia. Um, I can uh, speak for myself, but I'm sure Christine also agrees with me. It's so thrilling to see the, uh, all of the different activities that have taken place from when we were designing the strategy. And it's really um, amazing to see all the things you've done. So we do have one question uh, that uh, comes in the chat. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about the work of partners on intersectional issues, particularly trying to meaningfully include girls with disabilities in safe space activities? Because we know that can be a challenge. Do you have any tips for how other actors working in low resources settings can replicate any good practices that came out of this? 
Okay, so uh, in particular on intersectionality and uh, and girls with disabilities. So um, I think that uh, one of the the things that uh, one of the hubs uh, have been engaged in is uh, um, to have a, an online training in uh, in Arabic on um, a bit of the general basics. Uh, on uh, on uh, integration of uh, women and girls with disabilities in GBV programming, but also more specifically looking at uh, women and girls safe spaces and how to integrate. There was a huge effort to um, work on the rehabilitation of, of, of the structures themselves, uh, even in, uh, in settings uh, where um, the the humanitarian conditions uh, were, were dire, and in particular there. Um, and I think that uh, also some of the uh, some of the, um, the the good practices and uh, that that I mentioned uh, uh, also target uh, adolescent girls with disabilities. So um, uh, the robotics, I, I will uh, I will let uh, um, my colleagues uh, to speak more about this. I I know. Alexia and Farid are here, and I think also Majid, I see Majid is here, so if, if she wants to also speak more about this, and even in uh, the Adolescent Mothers Against All Odds, uh, um, um, there, were, um, there were efforts to, to ensure that um, adolescent girls with disabilities were involved. And some other things that we've been doing is uh, Voices from Syria for 2021, is, uh, has an easy read uh, a version for uh, people with intellectual disabilities and, uh, um, and also in her words that we are launching now, today, uh, it's being worked, uh, like we're working on an easy read version. Uh, some of the challenges that, uh, that we faced, uh, um, even uh, working with, uh, uh, there is in Turkey Cross Border, for example, there is a working group on uh, intersectionality and uh, and uh, to integrate more um, um, yeah and and focus more on the needs of people with disabilities and even with their support uh, it is we are finding it uh, difficult to have access uh, to some of these uh, adolescent girls uh, with these disabilities especially especially with integrate with uh, with intellectual disabilities uh, or impairments. Uh, another practice uh, um, is uh, uh, one of the of the actors have been working on um, uh, ambassadors, um, so inclusion ambassadors, and we have been working with these inclusion amb ambassadors, uh, training them on GBV basics, and also engaging them in uh, the data collection that uh, feeds into the. Um, to voice, voices from Syria, for example. So uh, this year and last year, we were able to conduct a focus group discussion with uh, women and girls with disabilities, uh, and uh, as well as older women, actually. Uh, and, and we integrate uh, uh, dedicated sessions uh, in, uh, in, in the findings. Uh, so from voices, for example. Um, yeah, I, I hope this is... Uh, Helpful, but thank you so much, Fulvia. Um, Zid, do you want to open the um, comments to your colleagues who are here in the whole of Syria? Otherwise, we have another question as well. So I can read the question yes. and then you can, uh, maybe your colleagues can join us. They can unmute themselves and uh, join on. So Claire was saying that um, she was very happy to see all the resources. Uh, she works a lot on child marriage, and they're thinking about how they can work across sectors on this issue. So I think they're inspired by your work with the sexual and reproductive health uh, sector as well. Since child marriage has implications across all the different sectors and the aid system can, it can actually encourage child marriage, can you tell a little bit more about how a strategy can help reach across the different sectors? Because I think this was actually a really great lesson learned from uh, bringing the two together. Yeah, thanks. So I think that uh, um, yeah, what we what I think that okay, sorry, the 
putting together my thought first. Um, a couple of things. So one uh, was really in, yeah, trying to engage other sectors to understand um, that adolescent girls uh, are a vulnerable group. That was uh, one of the main um, objective, even if it sounds uh, very simple and uh, um, and kind of basic. But as I said initially, the point was uh, that they were completely invisible in the humanitarian response. So even passing across this message that when we design our programming in any sector, we need to take into consideration their needs that are different from those of uh, adult women and that we need to collect the disaggregated data for this specific age group, et cetera, um, uh, was already a big message. Um, and uh, I think that uh, there were, of course, uh, some of the um, factors of, with whom we engaged uh, uh, easier with. So the SRH uh, and, and one of these uh, um, practices that well, SRD will share more about uh, the addressing mothers against all odds is really a curriculum that looks at both uh, the SRH perspective and the GDS per perspective for um, uh, adolescent mothers. So, so uh, addressing girls that ha have already been married. Um, other things that we worked on was uh, more with education, with uh, child protection, uh, but uh, I think that also in the review, uh, this was kind of one of the parts where we had to still engage more and um, uh, invest a bit more. And I have to say that uh, I think that is also everyone's experience uh, linked to GBV risk mitigation more in general. It's really depending a little bit on the willingness of, of others uh, to, um, uh, to to yeah, to uh, of other sectors so to to be engaged uh, and and to really to, um, to to make a change right so in with certain actors so we were uh, we we found uh, um, a better soil <laughs> to plant seeds uh, compared to to others but uh, yeah I think these are some initial thoughts. Yeah, I think that uh, that's uh, that's a really good point. I mean, I think it's always best to go with your allies, like to the people who are already um, kind of sensitive to our issues. And, you know, when I started out in gender based violence, we didn't even have GBV. We just worked through the reproductive health sector. So we were a sub thing of that way back when uh, Claire asked another question. She was saying it, um, it's uh, interesting that it requires us to think differently about how we design and implement our programs, which is, uh, of course, challenging. Um, uh, it wasn't really a question, it was a comment, but I had a question about this. I also thought it was pretty interesting the way that your methodology with the voices is now spreading to Sudan and Somalia as well, because all of us are working with adolescent girls and we all know how vulnerable they are. I wonder if you could speak a little bit about how that came to be. Did they approach you? Did you reach out to them? How did, how did, you, uh, how did that happen? Yeah, I think that um, I see also Julia is here that uh, that has been uh, really working on the voices from Sudan from scratch. So maybe uh, you, Julia, want to also come in uh, in here, but so that it's, it doesn't only come from me. I see your- Yes, of course. Too. Happy to uh, to uh, contribute to this, and thank you so much uh, uh, for the presentation, Julia. It's uh, very very interesting to know more about uh, you know this uh, topic in in, in a, you know a bit more consistent way. Um, on the voices from Sudan, um, so the idea was really um, coming from uh, the the Syria Hub together with uh, the representative here in uh, in Sudan, uh, Maximo. Who, I think discussed the idea of replicating the methodology um, that was developed by the Syria Hub uh, here in Sudan. Um, and that looked something very appealing, um, mainly because we have a really dramatic lack of data here. Um, the, the survey level data is quite old and uh, there, there wasn't really any other type of assessment that it looked 
at the whole country, mainly because with the previous regime that was um, that was uh, here until 2019, talking about GBV, talking about um, you know um, uh, yeah, talking about GBV was a, a complete red line. So it wasn't really possible to issue any sort of uh, document or do any assessment on GBV. So it was really uh, uh, an opening that we saw because of the regime change and the appetite for the new government to um, look more into, uh, into issues of GBV. Um, and the approach was, you know, the, the methodology was uh, followed the one developed by the CIRA hub, but um, it, it was a bit different in the sense that, for example, um, it was uh, a, a the report was co-authored by UNFPA and CIDAO, which is part of the Ministry of Social Development in Korean Sudan, so this data is really owned by the government of Sudan. Um, it also was a bit different in that, um, you know, the, the real implementation on the ground was done by UNFPA, while I think in, the, in Syria it's more the GBVAOR that takes a bit more of a um, of a, a of a prominent role in carrying out the research itself, um, but yes, this is a little bit of the background. But if you have specific uh, questions on it, uh, I'm also happy to to talk more or to address specific uh, uh, questions. I think that this uh, has been held up as a real best practice as well to take this qualitative data that we often ignore. There's a big drive for numbers, numbers, numbers. And what we know with gender-based violence is, you know, we're always preaching the gospel that it's the, the numbers are the tip of the iceberg. The numbers don't tell you everything. And I, and I was trained in anthropology and qualitative research. So I was particularly thrilled to see this because, I mean, I think it really uh, brings the, the richness and the depth of these girls experiences that the numbers that we could put together don't necessarily explain. So I was really um, excited to see this. So, yeah, And I think that in terms of the process, I, I mean, because, <clears throat> because of our, our idea to, to kind of, and, and, and what has been evaluated, like the, the, the suggestion that we would uh, um, that we would want to replicate this in other settings. So, so that's why where we started also sharing uh, more broadly beyond using uh, voices from, from our humanitarian response plan and our advocacy with humanitarian leaders and donors, et cetera. And, and we really presented it to a larger audience uh, and then with beyond numbers also presenting beyond numbers and how the approach uh, um, and how the assessment was done and what, what are the different steps, etc. This helped uh, a few countries that were interested uh, um, to reach out and to ask for support. And then there were a few, yeah, a, a dialogue and a few calls to better understand uh, what, what were their specific needs and how they could contextualize. And, um, and yeah, that, that, that is how it went basically. I, I also know, note that uh, I've talked about a bit of this robotics uh, uh, experience, and I see that uh, the colleagues from Esan Relief and Development are on the line, uh, Majid and the colleague. So Majid, if you want to come in, and I think you can also feel free to, to speak in Arabic because we have translation. If you want to give a bit more of uh, what has been that uh, that that experience and uh, and what are the feedbacks that girls uh, give you about the robotics program? If that's okay, Sarah. Of course. Thank you, dear Fulvia. This is Majid from Ihsan uh, uh, RD, uh, and here uh, with me, my colleague. Khaled, he is also expert in this topic, and he will talk shortly about this uh, this session about robotic robotic with adults and girls. Hello everyone, I'm from Hassan RD, working in protection. Uh, I think it's okay if we uh, put on the video. Yes. So uh, our um, our experience in, in in this tool, adding it to a GBV activity, was quite. Uh, 
uh, new and uh, innovative, as we can say. Uh, we tried to, let's say, um, merge this tool with uh, the activity uh, that we usually give with normal uh, tools. So the robotic was not the aim of um, giving this uh, life skills sessions. It was a tool to make it easier uh, to understand by adolescent girls in the WGSSs. And uh, it was kind of a new approach to in involve uh, tech, um, uh, new technology in, in the humanitarian uh, affairs, let's say, or, or actions or activities in general. And uh, we noticed that the facilitators were really interested in learning a new uh, approach to deal with girls and to uh, provide uh, decisions. And also the adolescents were really excited about how robots work, uh, how they are being assembled, how they are being programmed, what can we use them in the, in the real life. And that was also part of uh, the aim that we, we uh, put this tool in, in decisions. So it was really interesting, the feedback that we received that uh, the, the robots can be friends with, with adolescent girls, the robots can be assistant to the, to, to the girls, the robot can do tasks for the girls in, at home, just like a dreams or like a feedback that we received uh, after, after the cycle that we finish. Uh, so recently also we have uh, uh, received from the facilitators that uh, there's one small uh, test that they did. Uh, there's like few cups and each cup uh, they wrote a GBV concern that is being uh, faced by the adolescent or the woman in general. And uh, the robot task is to destroy these issues or just like uh, throw them away. Uh, so it was just uh, a tool to, to uh, provide the idea or make the idea clear more uh, to the adolescent. And during the process, the children or the girls will learn how to program, how to uh, assemble the robots and what is robots in general. So just like enriching their information. And uh, yeah, this is, this is just a brief. Thank you very much for having us. If there's any question or uh, comments, I'm, I'm available in the seven, next seven minutes. Now please type your questions in the chat box. If you don't want to type, sure. just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I love the Robots and Girls uh, program, by the way. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> I wish I had a robot to do some tasks for me. I'd like to join your program. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Any other questions? Fulvia, is there anyone else on your team you'd like to pull in to say a few things before we uh, wrap it up? I mean, I don't, I don't want to now put people on the spot <laughs> without <laughs> being clear prior. Uh, notice, but yeah, I'm happy that also Christine uh, Anderson is here and she's been yeah working on the strategy and also on the review of the strategy. So looking at the two sides, but I'm, I'm not sure if she wants to say a word or any of the colleagues from uh, the Turkey Cross Border Hub, I see they're on board as well. Everyone's shy today. That's okay, it's a Monday. But we're a group of friendly people and we encourage you to, to chat. Uh, oh, we have a question from Halima. Uh, what's the technology being used during the process? I guess that you mean specifically on the, the robots process, what technology they're using? I guess yes as well. Um, so if you allow me also to reply quickly. Uh, thanks Ahmed for the question. Um, Technology is the educational robotics provided by, I want, don't want to make like a marketing for the company, but one of the companies that works with robotics with children. So it's called educational robotics. And uh, the programming language is a block programming language. It's not coding by letters and characters. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just like an educational robot. All right. Uh, so no scripting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it will be hard for children to script, even for adults. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, very advanced program. <laughs> 
So, um, well, we have five more minutes. Um, if you have a question or a comment that you want to add, um, I encourage you to uh, ask. And in the meantime, I'll just promote that um, on Thursday, we're gonna meet again with Fulvia and her team. And this will be more of a, let's say a working group meeting where we're going to break into small groups and talk about different things and kind of share with each other um, our experiences. So we're hoping our colleagues in Asia and Africa and Europe and Latin America can join in and share their experiences too. Um, and uh, Christine is mentioning it might be useful to have a separate webinar exploring the SRH aspects of the strategy. Well, we're not having a separate webinar about it, but on uh, Wednesday uh, in the community of practice, which I urge you all to join if you're not already there, we will be talking specifically about the sexual and reproductive health aspects of it, um, because this definitely was an entry point for the um, adolescent girls. And as you mentioned with that shocking statistic, Fulvia, about the antenatal care, uh, you know, maybe one of the only spaces where we can actually reach adolescent girls in our humanitarian response. So um, really important area to intersect with. And at the community practice, we're always open to uh, suggestions for webinars, suggestions for topics you want to discuss. This was actually Fulvia's suggestion. So we were really thrilled to be able to bring that. Um, Fulvia, any last words before I uh, close the webinar? No, I think that thank again thanking everyone for for the attention and the interest and and really hoping to to learn from all of you throughout the week on the different topics that we will have on on every day, including yes, the child marriage is going to be one, and the needs assessment and SRH and GBV integration, including menstrual regime management, for example, as a topic that comes out quite often. And so, yeah, and looking forward to, um, to reconvening on Thursday. Great. Thanks again, Fulvia, for this great presentation. And thanks to everyone on the whole Assyria um, GBV team. You guys are very inspiring. And thanks for bringing it to the community of practice. If any of you have any questions about the community of practice, you can shoot me an email, gbvcop at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll see you guys online and hope to see you on Thursday. Thanks very much.